Welcome back, guys, to CFL Central, CFL content for the fans, by the fans, and we have our day one of free agency video. It's Free agency is open officially. Players are signing everywhere. Obviously, there was that grace period, whatever the hell they called it, where uh, uh, players... Tampering could, window. The tampering window where players <laughs> could go and discuss, and there was a lot of kind of tentative deals signed that then became official today. We will cover all of those. Do not worry. Uh, I, we're going to go, I think, team by team here. And um, before we go into any real depth, uh, Rick, I think we should literally yes. just go team by team and just list off everyone. <clears throat> that signed. Yep. Okay. And I'm including the tampering window in this. Oh, okay. Tampering window? Yep. Fair enough. Including that. Okay. So we will start with our beloved Hamilton Tie Cats. Mm -hmm. So. Brandon Barlow, defensive end. Jamal Peters, defensive back. Dwayne Hendricks, defensive end. Jordan Williams joined us in that trade with the draft picks. Linebacker. Milanovic, light, light tree. I probably butcher that name. Unless it's leader. Carter, yeah. <laughs> um, he's going to be our backup to... Running back. James Butler. Our third fullback in James Tuck. We have three national fullbacks. Why? Yep. I don't know. Evans Johnson, offensive line. He's going to be a good national offensive lineman. And the name I've been dreading all day <laughs> long to pronounce, Luther Halu Avenanhu. I probably butchered that. Is I was Hakunavu? dreading it. My... Is it Hakunavu? That's what it looks like. Ha Hakunavu. Hakunavu. That's what it looks like to me. I, it, I, probably, I I'm probably butchering it. it. That's one hell of a name. Uh, wide receiver, though, uh, formerly with uh, the Stampeders. Uh, I'll then list off the next one here uh, for the Argonauts. They got Dijon Brissett. I don't I'll probably screw that up. Uh, who re-signed uh, wide receiver uh, Isaiah Cage, offensive lineman Maurice Carnell the fourth, defensive back Jack Kesar, linebacker. Uh, these are all re-signings. Like, almost. I was going to say, I thought you were going to go. Uh, I Darius thought you were going to go do the free agent Siraco. signings. I uh, see. I, if you put other ones in here, this is your fault. Yeah. Um, if <laughs> if you look Kossi. to the right, if you look to the right, there's oh. a whole free agent list. Oh. Okay. So oh, <laughs> I was looking at the wrong. I was looking at the wrong spot. See, you put a different on the spread. The, you did the spreadsheet. Oh. This is your fault. Um, so yeah, let's see the Brian. Haralimana, I don't know. Uh, Lareem Haruj. What are these names? Haruj. So, fun, funny joke. Lahu from the US Liram. kicker. <laughs> yeah, so funny thing joke is he yeah. used to be our kicker and he used to kick for the Argos before he went down to the NFL to go kick for Dallas Cowboys. And now he went to USFL. Now he's back with Toronto. I see. Uh, then they signed Jake uh, Serezna. Sir, that was in. Evans and that was in um, um, Curly Getting Junior's trade. Okay, Rick, I, got, I got a lot of signings. I got to go through. Um, yeah. Uh, Saban Scarver, wide receiver from Ottawa. Uh, Tunde, uh, Tunde Aldiki uh, from the Tie Cats. Uh, Kerfala Exum from Winnipeg, defensive back. Uh, Fraser uh, Sopic from or Sopic, not sure. Linebacker from uh, Hamilton, uh, Albert Awachi, uh, fullback from the uh, Saskatchewan Rough Riders, uh, Tedra Canson, uh, D lineman uh, from Winnipeg. That's a good pickup. Uh, Quincy <laughs> Moget, uh, defensive back from BC. Uh, should I continue with Montreal or you want to give that one a whirl? Um, I'll let you do Montreal because that's a nice short list. Okay. Uh, Derek Wigan, a de defensive tackle, formerly with the Stamps. Uh, Tevin Jones, wide receiver, formerly with the Riders. Uh, Isaac. Adiyemi Berglund, a defensive lineman with the Alouettes. Uh, Sean Thomas Ellington, uh, formerly with the Hamilton Tiger Cats, uh, running back. Dylan Wynn, D lineman so uh, from the reason The reason why I put a star beside Dylan Wynn is because that's pending his physical tomorrow. He gotcha. has a physical, so that's pending his physical. Okay. I'll let you so, uh, cover the Red Blacks. I, they got Darius Balik from Toronto. Adrius or Adrius Pickett, yeah, Pe yeah, Pickett, your friend and colleague Drew Brown. It's the Drew Brown train, baby. <laughs> and also, 
<laughs> Dominic Rhymes, wasn't that the I'm gonna trip over my own feet rhymes? Oh, the the, 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 one, the, the don't go down before the time codes out. Yeah. Uh Dominic Rhymes for two years. Silas Stewart and uh from Calgary and Philip Norman. Norman from BC. So right. here's the funny thing. The reason why I, I have these five quarterbacks here is because you had Pigram, Adams, Crum, Brown, and Mazzoli. Crum or Pigram is going to get cut, guaranteed. Definitely. Adams will get cut. It's just a matter of Pigram or Crum who's going to get the third quarterback spot. That's fair. Uh, we'll go into Winnipeg. Now, Winnipeg didn't really make a splash in the free agency, but there's a few others uh, that are worth mentioning uh, just since our last video. Uh, Chris Traveler, obviously with the NFL, uh, he has come back. Uh, on a one-year deal, uh, Chris, I uh, you don't have the uh, contract term in here, although I know it's one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. You can add that to that for uh, Straveler. Oh, one hundred twenty-five. Uh, for... Okay. Uh, nope, one twenty. Uh, then oh, Chris Ivy from the Arena Football League, Darius Hodge from the USFL. Uh, then in terms of resigns, uh, Oliveira uh, and what? as well as Dalton Schoen since the last time. Did Oliveira been... get the two years, or was it Schoen that got two years? I know uh, one of them got uh, two years. Oliveira got two years. Um, okay. Uh, he got 230 at two years. Uh, Shown did not. He just got one year. Uh, okay. Let's see. Alexander, Augustine, Bryant, Cole, uh, Cadwander, Goche, Hallett, uh, both of the Hallett brothers, Jefferson, Kolinkowski, Cramdy, Lawson, Newfelt, Nichols. So uh, the vast majority of their guys, although there are a few uh, notable uh, guys that left, and one of them is on Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan made a big splash in the free agency and has done quite well uh, as – you got they got uh, AJ Olette running back from the Toronto Argonauts. Uh, excellent deal there. Uh, two years at one hundred and sixty thousand. I think that's a very good deal for AJ Olette. Uh, Malik Carney, good pickup from the Tie Cats, uh, defensive end. Uh, Adam Eclair, linebacker from the Ottawa Red Blacks. Jalen Edwards Cooper, defensive back from the BC Lions. Uh, Jamarcus Yoshi Hardrick, offensive lineman, offensive tackle specifically uh, from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. That's a fantastic pickup. Uh, Jameer, uh, Jameer Thurman, linebacker from the Hamilton Tigercats. Jordan Herdman Reed, linebacker from the Calgary Stampeders. Uh, and that's when made a big draw in the free agent pool this year. And don't forget, they also signed his twin brother. They re signed his twin brother, too. So both Herdman Reed brothers now both play for Saskatchewan. That's true. That is true. I'll go into the Elks here real quick. Um, they only have four. Uh, yeah, so there's Javon Leak, uh, running back from the Toronto Argonauts. Uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson, the controversial signing that was simply because now it makes the status of their quarterback, Trey Ford, a little bit less. Um, it kind of seemed like he was just going to take the reins, but 500,000 500, at one year for McLeod Bethel Thompson. Uh, uh, I know you have his former team in here as the, uh, the Argonauts, although I know he was in – on the New Orleans Breakers, I think, or what? Yeah the called? the only th the only uh, thing that the I USFL. the only the only reason why I put Toronto is because That's with the USFL year. and XFL you cannot find any stats for anyone. So I That's just true. Put, and I th and I think the New Orleans Breakers team. is one of the teams being abolished in the merger. Yeah, um, Boris Beatty, uh, kicker, and uh, Curly Gittens Jr., um, which uh, the Elks got with a trade. Uh, so it's funny. It seems like the Edmonton Elks are the Toronto Arkansas <clears throat> retirement home as well as Saskatchewan um, from what I'm saying, not retirement home, but th that's where they're going afterwards. It's just, I mean, I could, I mean, I could say the same thing about Ottawa where all the tie cap players go to Ottawa, just... o well, Ottawa is where, <laughs> is where everyone's career goes to die apparently from everything yeah. I've seen. And that's not, and that's not just tie cats just from everyone I've seen that just, they haven't been able so... to make anything work. Um, I will go with I will do Calgary to give yeah, you a bit of a break. Yep. Yeah. So Matthew Schiltz from Hamilton. So Jake Mayer, you're now on notice. Okay. Poor, poor Carter's favorite defensive back, Demario Houston. Dem this one hurts Although, the you most. Know, you I know what think. I will say? Demario Houston was my favorite at the start of the season. My favorite at the end of the season was Evan Holm. But Demario losing Demario Houston does suck. It really does. I'm Trayvon Tate, Holm, offensive line with Toronto. Uh, Micah. I'm gonna assume that says, that's uh, Micah, and you misspelled it. <laughs> no, no, that's how his actual is it first name is spelled. spelled like that. Yeah, that's how it's actually spelled. Is it like Micaiah? I don't know. Like interesting. But yeah. Interesting 
Um, and then you have Adam Kunar, who hasn't officially, but they did a handshake deal during negotiation window. Here's the interesting matter. Yep. Jamal Morrow went from Saskatchewan to Calgary <laughs> as a running back. So now, here was, here was the thing that I was going through the day. You have Logan, Mills, and now Morrow. So I'm assuming Logan just stays punt return and kick return, and then it's Morrow and Mills as running back. That's fair. That's fair. I can see that. And then the, the last ones. team, we have Williams. Please stand back as the new running back in BC. That's Stephen cool. Richards what, and Daniel back, Joseph. Game back because if he can, he can be such a huge asset for the Lions. But he's just got to get that back. Stephen Richards and Daniel Joseph. I don't play. I don't believe played in the CFL last year. If I do, if they did, I apologize. Another Winnipeg. Player Dakota Prukop. Dakota Prukop is the best short yardage quarterback in the league. However, that was definitely the case last season. This season, we'll have to see simply because now we have Chris Strebler coming back into the mix. It will be one of those two. Dakota Prukop is a guy who every time you needed him to get one, he would get two, he'd get four. He was phenomenal. Uh, now, he also had really, really good uh, offensive linemen surrounding him, helping him in that position. Uh, however, it's going to be one of those things that is a massive asset uh, for the Lions on offense as that so, uh, short yardage QB. After Dakota, Dakota Prukop, we have Jake Hardy from Montreal and yep. the possible Matthew Betts replacement and Pete Robertson. Question, didn't wasn't Pete Robertson the one that got suspended last year? I can't remember. Oh, I couldn't remember. I could have sworn he got suspended for something. I know there's uh it might have been him. The guy I think actually I think it might have. Is he the one who had Beck Caleros? Yes. It, it was. was. It was Pete Robertson. <laughs> Yeah, he had but Zach Caleros, also known as the CFL definition of F around and find out. Um, and so, um, yeah, he, yeah, so hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen with him playing in BC. <laughs> but now we go on to a quick rundown of all of the players that are left. So we have five quarterbacks. We have Nick Arbuckle. Kai Loxley, Jake Dolagala, Dominic Davis, and Taylor Corndog Cornelius. Where do you have For, the, the remaining guys on here? Uh, if you look just to just the left by of... Just by position? Yes, okay. by position. Running backs, there's four running backs left. Greg McRae, Kadeem Carey. Greg McRae, um, really, he's a really good backup returner. Or you could honestly have him as a starting returner. I, I, I liked him in that role. Um... Um, I, th I think again, as a backup running back, he's a good, he's a good choice. Keenan LaFrance played for BC, but then before that he played for Saskatchewan and Shannon Brooks played for Edmonton. Here comes the interesting list. And this is wide for the receivers? wide receivers. If you look, Greg Allingson and Shaq Evans have not played a full season since 2019. What does status mean? A and N. So, um, status that's Americans and nationals, Canadians gotcha. and Americans. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I know I was doing some of the stats and then it's like, it just became a butt, a pain in the butt. So that's good we have know. Greg, Greg Ellingson, Shaq Evans, Marner, who played for Ottawa. I love how you skipped the first thing. <laughs> it's like OC Marner, Marner or whatever, or Mariner. Trayvon Smith, Nate Bahar. Yep. That's all Ottawa. Yep. Cameron Phillips, from the lone from wolf Argos. from the Argos. Herchi Mayala, Chris Oshikoshi, Daryl. That's an awesome. Daryl Walker. Oshikoshi. Or Oshikoshi. Duke Williams, Tim White. Yes, Tim White's. Did you say Daryl Walker? Daryl Walker. Tim White's still sitting on the 300,000, by the way. He hasn't gotten off of that 300. He still price. wants that 300. Yeah. So then here comes the Winnipeg mystery. Rashid Bailey, 
G- uh, Genaria and Grant. I think I think I think Bailey's out because I think he want he wants the the bigger deal because he took a pay cut with the Bombers. I don't think he's going to take another one. Genaria and Grant. I've heard rumors that the Bombers are close to Genaria and Grant. Uh, however, there's also a lot of rumors with a guy where I'm going to discuss uh, at the very bottom of this list. Uh, so we'll have to see in that regard. And then Brendan O'Leary Orange, who honestly, if teams are looking for a receiver that works well as kind of like a backup fill-in, but when he's a fill-in, he's pretty reliable for the most part. I'd say Brendan O'Leary Orange is an excellent fit in that regard. I was actually quite a fan of Brendan O'Leary Orange whenever we did see him on the field. Um, just good, just good consistency. He had good ke- uh, chemistry with Zach Calero, so I could see him doing well with a. Uh, I, I could actually see him do- doing well in a place like BC, uh, alongside a guy like uh, Hollins and Hatcher. It's kind of your third or fourth guy, uh, even in a starting position, um, working with Vernon Adams Jr. I think that'd work well. Then we go. So then, uh, we have Juwan Brissett. Brisket, uh, Briss- Brissason. Is, is that what it is? I thought it was Briss. There's no Breskison. No, I was is what it is. Breskison. Breskison makes sense. I was going to say it's not Brissett. There's no T. Um. <laughs> <laughs> then there's Jake Winicky. Now yep. here's the thing with Jake Winicky. If I would say probably if you want to offer him nine hundred or nine hundred ninety five to a hundred thousand, it's like where for, are we going? <laughs> ninety five to a hundred thousand. He could be that depth receiver. That's true. Colton Hunchuk, Emmanuel yep. Arsenal, Daniel Peterman, and Carter's last person he Lucky wanted to speak with. Whitehead. I would love to see his return to Winnipeg. He was very much loved in Winnipeg when he was here. Uh, he had, um, he was he was fantastic when he was here. Uh, uh, excellent at, uh, as a returner. I remember actually. Um, this was right right when I was really getting into football because I had played in high school. And I remember the first – I had been to some Bomber games, but my first game I went as, like, my whole family. It was me, my dad, my brother, uh, and my mom. Uh, the very first game we went to all together, Lucky Whitehead receives the kickoff return, runs past everyone, and gets a touchdown. With his wild hair. With, with his <laughs> wild red and black locks flowing in the wind. And it was like it, it was incredible, and it was one of those things where now we are season ticket members, and Lucky Whitehead, you are one goddamn reason why. And oh. so the thing is, is that like with a guy like Lucky Lucky Whitehead, another thing to mention as well is that Lucky Whitehead is is a guy who. It's funny you don't really hear this debate in, in the CFL. You hear it a lot in the NHL, though. Do people want to live in Winnipeg? Uh, the answer for Lucky Whitehead is yes, yes he does. He loved it when he was here. He has, uh, he. Um, it was one of those things where he did a lot of things in the community um, that uh, I'm not going to say most other players didn't do, but he just kind of went a little further than most and really, really connected with the fans in that regard. When Even when he was playing for the Lions, he'd stay long after the game, signing autographs, taking pictures with guys. Um, just kind of shows you what kind of player he is, and I think uh, he would love to be a part of the Bombers organization once again. So offensive lineman is Landon Rice, Sean Jameson, Hunter Stewart, Shane Richards, Tyrone Riley, Kyle Saxlin, Chris Van Zyl. This guy, is he no, no offense to Chris Van Zyl. The guy is 41. He's a fossil. <sighs> I think it's time to call it a career. Yeah. Um, your guy, Je- Jeff Gray. I'm okay Colin Kelly, that. I'm pretty Jeff sure. Gray, Jeff Gray is going to be replaced by Liam Dobson, who is the, the backup. He was a first-round draft pick from the Bombers from Texas State. Uh, he's going to be replacing uh, Jeff Gray. I'm almost positive in the lineup. So, uh, And Jeff Gray, I will say. Jeff Gray, the thing about Jeff Gray is that he's very much a double bla- he's He's or a double-bladed sword or whatever the hell the term is. Um. He, there so as an offensive lineman he's pretty solid in terms of you know does well with the tush push he's good in pass block pretty good in run block the number one problem with jeff gray too many procedure penalties whenever it was a procedure penalty 50 percent of the time it was jeff gray and so that's the only issue with jeff gray is he will take those procedure penalties that's my only complaint uh however i would be lying if i said that he was that he wasn't a great uh a great offensive lineman he he is he is a very good offensive line good option so, so Colin kelly's that one that went down south 
for the beginning of the USFL. Yep. He signed with Saskatchewan. He had to sit out two games because he got suspended for using drugs. Damn performance enhancement drugs, people. Like, come on. Say no to drugs. Eric Lofton, Jamal uh, Kem- Kembel, Campbell. Kem- um, Ryan, this one's going to bug me. She, Schievler. Is it Schievler she- or Skivir? Or I can't remember. Skivir. I don't know. Hugh Thornton. Uh, O-Lyman, yeah. Hugh Thornton, Josiah St. John, James, and Samuel Tomlinson. I, the other player that's on your list, I forgot to take him off. So that's yeah, where Phil, the offense went. Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I see that. And then uh, for D Lyman, we, I see we got Vincent Desjardins, uh, Sean Oakman, Jagger Davis. That's a nice name uh, on a guy who hasn't gone yet. The Jamal Davis, <laughs> Ted Lawrence, Jonathan Kongbo, uh, De, uh, Damaris Christmas. Which is one hell of a name, uh, Pete Robertson, as we talked about. Oh, yeah. is he supposed to be off here? Or yeah, I, I forgot to take him off before uh, we Terrell, did our video. Uh, McLean, Mike Moore, AC Leonard. That's another big name on here. Daniel Ross, Nick Usher, Woody <clears throat> Barron, Almondo Sewell, and Ricky Walker. So there, there is. So here's the thing with Ricky Walker. Mm-hmm. He had a handshake agreement with Calgary. He turned around today and told him. I have to think about my future if it's going to be in the CFL or not. I see, I see, I see. So they, he went back on his word, and now he has to decide if he wants to play in the CFL or not. That's fair. Uh, we got line, uh, linebackers coming up, and actually reminds me, there's two player uh, retirements that we need to mention. Uh, firstly, it will be uh, Jesse Briggs, uh, linebacker for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And secondly... Number two and three on my list. My boy, Jackson if- Jeffcoat. Defensive if lineman. You go- Thank you for an, uh, in a fantastic career. I heard it. He was getting lowballed by the Bombers. Uh, my guess was that uh, it was two things. Number one, budget. Number two, uh, he he struggled staying healthy. He never he, he was here for at least six seasons. I know that, and he didn't play a full season any of them because he always got injured. So, so that was my guess. I'll just go over the full list because it's a short list. For Chris Lyons. Edwards. What? No, the retirees. Okay, it's a short list. Chris Edwards, you know, people don't want you in the league. You know, go mug people out on the street because you okay, are tired. Okay, okay. <laughs> let's calm it hey, down no, no, no. here. No, I'm just reading a tweet that I see that I seen earlier. Okay, well then bloody specify that. <laughs> um Jackson Jeffcoat, Jesse Briggs, yep. Samuel Thomaslin, Dane okay. Evans, Charlie Power. Oh, Dane Evans is retiring. Yeah. That. He's coaching in Tulsa, Oklahoma now. Charlie Power, Drew Richmond, yep. Mike the, the bomber god of all gods, Mr. Mike Miller, who is now the called it a career. Team, the special teams god that is Mike Miller. Yes. Incredible for, on special teams. Best former team bomber and finished his career as an Argo. Andrew Harris, who is now also in it's, coaching. It, I'm not going to lie. It's, it, it is a little bit of a shame that he couldn't finish his career in Winnipeg, but he is a bomber legend, no question. David Brown and Zach Lindley. Z- Lindley. Yeah, Lindley. And so we'll get. Uh, we'll now actually we'll go back to the linebackers here for a minute. If, if you if you go to long snappers, kickers, and punters, there's only two people. I see. Well, hold on a second. I'm going to go through the linebackers first. We didn't do that. Okay. Uh, we got. Uh, Avery Williams, we got Dan, uh, Dan <laughs> Bassam Bombo, which is an awesome name. Kevin Francis, Trevor uh, Hoyt, uh, Hinek Mwamba, Simone Lawrence, and Rock, uh, or in Roche, one of the two. Penny, Penny. L- Larea, uh, Malik Clements from the Bombers, obviously. Larry Dean, Derek Moncrief. Uh, Brad Cohen, Brad. Charlie Moore, Jordan Reeves, and Trey Watson from the XFL. Yeah. Coming up. And then and I got the defensive backs. Got a lot of those. Yeah. Um, Siante Evans. <laughs> yeah, Siante. I was, I was, I'm like, how do I? Siante Evans, Nav, Nav Reeves, Leon. Yep. He, he come Bailey. Sherrod uh, Baltimore. Sherrod Baltimore. Sherrell Brooks. Abdul Kenne. Yep. Robertson Daniel. Robert Priester. 
Taiki San Sancon. Right, well, it's Sanko because there's no N at the Sanko. end. Sanko. Yeah. Jacob Dearborn. Adlin Darby Alden, Jr. Alden Darby Jr. as well as Winston Rose, both bomber. Sorry, I have to I have to have my bombers. <laughs> That's okay. J Jeremy Clark. Nick Marshall is only on here because he got arrested in November, so he got released. Natrell, Jamerson, Shaq Richardson, Nick Taylor, Ed Ganey, Aaron Grimes, and Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Now, there's a, a lot on uh, there. The, now, there's a very short. There's not a lot <laughs> at all. Uh, for long snappers, kickers, and punters, I see. Uh, I don't see any punters on here. Uh, nope. Sergio Castillo is on here for Winnipeg. I heard that they are very, very close to a deal for him to re-sign with the Bombers, so I expect that to probably change in the next two to three days. Uh, I mean, realistically, who else is are they? Is there to sign, and who else is going to go there besides and, Castillo? And and, the, and they like Castillo. We like Castillo, so it's like as long as the budget's there, then do it. Uh, and then Tanner Dahl uh, with uh, the um, Ottawa Red Blacks. So we'll have to see how that goes in that regard. And then I see here you got the t the three down nation top fifty. We'll go through the top ten. Of uh, these are free agents still available. So, of the top ten, one only one signed, and is that the and that is Tunde Adelike as number three. So there's Tim White, AC Leonard, Woody Barron, Robertson Daniel, Sean Oakman, Landon Rice, Janarian Grant, Kadeem Carey, and Sergio Castillo. Uh, then there's a few guys that I think are sleeper picks in my opinion that aren't in the top ten, but are very much uh, excellent pickups. So. Uh, Lucky Whitehead, I think, is one of them. Yeah, he's number 15. Uh, he's number 15. Like, if I'm looking down here, like, there's some picks on here that, like, I just... Rasheed Bailey at 32 seems... I, I don't. I wouldn't put him in the top 10, but, I mean, uh, um, Clements is, is a good guy when it comes to depth. Uh, obviously, I'm kind of going through my, uh, my bombers. Uh, Pete Robertson, the PR nightmare. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um, it, 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 you know, the, um, you know it's funny. How does Dylan so, win now at, at his age now? So, Dylan, he is. If he can stay healthy, he's good. Ah, it's but the Jackson Jeff Coat conundrum. Yeah. Um, Simone Lawrence, if you can get him for probably about a hundred grand for one season, That's you can good. get your bang for your buck. Um, the the th here's the funny thing that I bring up. So from 35 down to 45, that's yep. 10 spots. So uh, 35, Sean Thomas Erlington, James Tuck, 39, Luther at 41, Evan Johnson at 42, Frazier Sopik at 43, and Henson at 45. There's more people signed at the back end than there is in the top 10. Well, that's that's the thing. I almost wonder if teams are trying to sign some of these lower, uh, oh. these, some of these uh, guys a little lower on, uh, lower down here, to kind of like by making these kind of top end players have to wait a little bit. Hopefully, the, I think they're kind of hoping they can maybe get that asking price down a little bit and then eventually strike a deal. One thing so that I'm awesome. trying to find that I found out today. Yep. Is. I'm just trying to go through our Discord chat because I posted it earlier today. Is the salary caps for the next five years? Okay. I think we'll discuss that, and then I think that's pretty much all I got, at least. Um. So, out of all of the people that you believe that have signed, is there anyone that stands out? That has signed? One, one person that has signed. Uh, I can't remember his name, but I'd have to say the, uh, probably the Riders head coach because uh, the, the Riders new head coach uh, because of all the players he was able to bring over from Toronto. Outside of Saskatchewan, because everyone's going to pick freaking Saskatchewan. Outside of Saskatchewan. Um, yeah. Well, because everyone's going to say oh, AJ Olette and all the people at Saskatchewan. Uh, I mean, Calgary was a team who did very well defensively and adding Demary Houston. What is I'm, what I'm interested to see is how Jamal Peters does for us. 
That's fair. I think BC is going to be such a strange team to watch now with Dakota Prukop and with um, with uh, what's his name with William Stan back there. I'm really curious to see how their run game kind of evolves now in that regard. Um, so, uh, Ottawa's got to decide who the hell their quarterback is. Um, I two think things. I'm curious to see how the dynamic works. Uh, for the Edmonton Elks in regards to their quarterback tandem uh, with Trey Ford, McLeod, Bethel, Thompson. If you go to your Discord, I just sent you the screenshot of the form of all the figures that's going to be over the next five years. Um, so here's the thing with me. I find the East got weaker than the West. That's fair. That's the thing for for a lot of for because now longest, it's just a toss up for the longest time in the CFL, the West, like the West has, the, no, typically the West has been a bit stronger, uh, with the exception kind of with Hamilton and sometimes Toronto, um, and Montreal did pretty well and the East was really able to balance it out for the most part this season, but it looks like it's going to be kind of shifting back to the West, um, not in regards to a team like Hamilton losing a lot, but in regards to Teams like um, Saskatchewan really making a push to really re-strengthen with DC trying to stay stay where they are. Calgary not being you know completely MIA like they were last free agency, but you know at least making a little bit of a, a small splash with a guy like Matthew Schiltz to maybe light a thunder uh, a fire under the Jake Mayer's ass and kind of the sense of like all right like we have another guy that we can start with even if he's. Not necessarily the be all end all with Matthew Schiltz, uh, Demar- uh, Demario Houston over there, uh, adding a bit with a running game with Jamal Morrow. Um, so there's there's a lot of moves that have been made out west. So uh, I think the West Division will see a bit of a shakeup. And if you're a Bomber fan, it's just like you gotta really really hope that you're able to keep that top spot locked up. Um, I know there's going to be a lot of people questioning it. Uh, Do I think they're still capable of doing it? Absolutely. However, is it as set in stone as it was last year? No, it's not. I'm curious to see what you guys are going to do on defense, especially the defensive. I I think, I think it'll be very fun to see at least for the bombers, how, because they're going to try to keep Castillo. I've heard them talking about Janarian Grant. I'm not sure if that's necessarily the best option. I like, I love Janarian Grant, but it's one of those things where I look more towards lucky whitehead because he really, because the thing about Janarian Grant is that he's a backup receiver and he's a starting returner. With lucky whitehead, he's a starting receiver and a starting returner. So in terms of saving on cap, lucky whitehead is a great option. However, unless the bombers try to get bold and get both guys, because what the bombers have shown us is that when we think they're losing one of them, or when we think they're only making one signing, they get both of them done. All of their and shown, of course, being what I am referencing in that regard. So I'm curious to see who from uh, uh, other teams uh, the Bombers decide to bring in and see if they do try to take a nice splash in the free agent market and bring in one of the big fish that are still available. So the salary cap from last year was at 5.45 million. It's now gone up to 5.525. Next year in 25, it goes from 5.25 to 5.65. Then it goes up to 5.75, 5.85, and then Five. 2028, it will just be under 5.9 million. That's the better way of saying 5.888889. So you figure between two, between this year and 2028, that 110,000 that goes up, that's almost like one decent player. That's how it goes with the salary cap, and that's a and that's the thing that I think will be very very interesting because, like, I mean, look at the contracts players are demanding this season. If we no stay kid. on this pace, how the hell are we gonna so manage with that here's, salary cap? Here's my theory. Okay, I can understand Javon Leak is a good returner. How do you pay How's for it? one? How much is he making? One hundred twenty-five thousand. He had three. Returns uh, this year for touchdowns. Maybe the Elks got more plans with them. I don't know. But anyways, just before Carter wraps this up, if anyone wants to go watch the lovely six-hour live stream over on Ty Cats Talk Network, where I sat there for six hours digging through all of these signings today, 
you're more than welcome to go on there. And for those who are wondering, we've went this entire video. We didn't talk about the biggest name of them all, Matthew Betts. Where is he? He has his own video that should already be out uh, by the time this one comes out. Uh, he signed That's with Carter. the Detroit Lions <laughs> of the NFL. So make sure you guys check that video out. Have to do a shameless plug. And so, yeah, I think that is all we got. Is there anything else you got there, Rick? No. All right. Well, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe if you have not already. Again, check out that other video. Check out Rick's long as hell live stream on the CFL free agency. And we'll make sure to keep you guys uh, uh, in the loop for when more of these guys actually put pen to paper and sign their new contracts with their new teams. So without further ado, I'll see you all next time. Touchdown,